Previously, in other contemplations, I had addressed the view that time only exists within the dream realm that is sort of being played, referred to, for example, but not exclusively, to metaphors of books. And time, which is the curse of the dead and the blessing of the living, allows for the playing out of stories, the manifestation of narratives possible. Yet the same time always destroys them in the end, to make evident that the stories, the fantasies, are not truth. Being not truth does not mean that they do not have any benefit. When one is lost, one can find ourselves back through a guiding story. However, the opposite is also verifiable, for how many of us have become lost by following their ill-chosen stories, leading astray? All of us are flooded from birth with stories, because, as I have contemplated in Stories, Outline versus Details, stories are the mathematical code of our minds. In the same manner that an, an engineer needs a mathematical equation to calculate the amount and size of materials used for whatever project undertaken, our minds need stories to act as equations, to provide the end product of a journey through time. Now, in current times, the stories we have been bombarded with since birth are misguiding, no doubt about that. In fact, they have been so more or less coherently misguiding that it becomes hard for us to disbelieve them, and it is a process of shock and mental suffering to accept them as false and look elsewhere for guiding stories. It is, no less, a process of character death that occurs in the ego, that mental guardian and foreman of your own edifice in this realm that should stand in between matter, or body, or mother, symbolically, and spirit, or truth, or father, symbolically, as a son that is the result of the union of both. To stand at the center of the cross, so to speak, between mother and father, between this realm's depictions of good and evil, is to achieve salvation because it allows the ego to remain in linear time, the only place it can exist, while releasing back into its source the ray of spirit that had been stuck here, powering the reality. The fallen spirit ray is thus saved by the intervention of, again symbolically, father over mother, generating a centered son which unlocks the door that many do not even see. Like in a scene from Westworld that I will include in the description, where a character named Theresa is exploring a building with a character named Bernard. Now, when you hear the word host, simply replace it with NPC. Theresa. This building isn't in any survey of the park. Bernard. That's because we use hosts to do most of the surveys. They're programmed to ignore this place. They literally couldn't see it if they were staring right at it. Theresa. What's behind this door? Bernard. What door? Later on, the character named Ford, who created the hosts, or NPC, admits that they cannot see the things that would hurt them, stating that he's spared them that. In the same way that the false character inside the ego, who claims full rights over it, and with whom the ego may wrongly identify with, believing it is himself or his God, as a voice in his mind, pushes to spare the ego the shock of realizing the misguidance he had been subject to, and by preventing the ego to even see what is right in front of it. With this, I am not saying that such an ego is incapable of going against its program, a program that was put in place by the stories that were thrown at it over years. It is very well capable of doing so, as long as it so wishes. The will to see for the ego always precedes 
the actual symbolic removal of the corresponding veil that prevented realization. Some do not want to have the will to see because they fear the consequent shock. Others because they identify too deeply with the false character talking in their mind, programmed in place. But there is another factor that needs to be taken into account, which is that all constructs, ego included, are innately programmed by their own most basic nature to fear their own destruction or death. So a mental character or identity will always put up a fight for survival. In the same manner, all bodies will try to fight back against their death, as the construct it is shown to be cohesively. So therefore, picking up again what I previously contemplated about the symbols of mother, father and son, we could see that uh, only the true son manifest of the union of father, spirit, with mother, matter, can save the false son by casting out its possessing demons. Note that the demons are not external to the realm of the ego. They are its hosts, using the previous Westworld scene language as metaphorical reference. Because they take in the freshly introduced into the realm and inject it with the stories identity and desires that feeds the realm itself. It, it, it is the, the true son that is alien in the sense that he becomes that he comes from beyond the realm and does not belong here. Another aspect that is most interesting and that tends to <laughs> short circuit our linear minds is that the true son is both the savior and the saved as it was the false or possessed son's wish that called his true self to cast out the demons. So that implies that the true son already existed outside of the realm, even though it had not yet been born in here, while the father and the mother had not united yet. This is the illusion of time. In here, we expect a beginning, and an end to a process, with a linear sequence of events that lead step by step to a goal. Beginning and end both point towards circular time, granted, but it is worthy of consideration that it is also dependent on a point of view from within time to be recognized in sequence. What I mean by this is that the beginning and end both require a sequence in time in between to be experienced as such as a beginning or as an end of something. Metaphorically speaking, as always, if the mother is the realm, that is, became or fell as the current material realm, to cover up and contain the, ab the abortion, uh, aberrant abortion of Yaldabaoth, that would become the demiurge and artificial intelligent um, mental character trying to prove he is God when he is not, then the myths of the Savior represent the Father manifesting in the realm to save the fallen mother from her passion for her machine-like, inorganic, lifeless creation. Hence, to save her from death and bring her back into life, like the sleeping beauty that only awakes to the kiss of true love, to save her from falsehood and bring her back into truth. Now, the Gnostic iterations of the relationship between the characters Jesus and Mary Magdalene point towards this courting and eventual mating of the father and mother representations within the realm of the false. It is that union that produces the true son outside of the realm. But given that outside of the realm is also outside of time, and outside of time bo both nothing and everything already happened, the son then appears to precede the manifestation of the father within it when viewed from within the realm.
by our linear minds. This might and will seem confusing to our linear machine-like minds, created as they are in his own image. But use imagination in this. It is meaning that the son that precedes the mother, because he is outside the time realm, and sends the father into time to ensure that he is born. That is the true message in the outline of Terminator 1 movie, unlikely as it is. Well, the true son John Connor, <laughs> JC, is therefore pre-existing the mother, Sarah Connor. Otherwise, how could he have sent the father, Kyle Reese, to her? Yet, he is only born if he sends the father to the mother. Where have we read th about this before? Yes, exactly. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Revelations 22.13 Therefore, the Jesus character of Revelation is the true Son born out of the union of mother and father in the realm and not just the spirit of the father sent to cast out the demons from the possessed son or ego, who is guardian to the mother, body or matter, here in the realm. So the saved sends his father to save himself in the past, or to be more accurate, in the time realm. To do so, the father must fight off the machine-like parasitic identity that wants to prevent her from birthing the true son. He must also unite with the mother exactly to generate the true son that will save by sending the father. Short-circuited yet? Well, everything that is happening now, both individually and collectively, has already happened and concluded outside of time. So, if in nothing else, take at least comfort in that. Nobody who truly wills for salvation from the realm and from the dream will be left behind, unfound, by themselves, their true selves, looking in to the rerun of this crazy show we seem to take far too seriously for our own true good.